Uh, John Venables, who uh, you may remember is one of the child killers of poor little Jamie Bulger. Uh, he's turned from a child killer into a chaotic adult, a paedophile, twice uh, returned to jail for abusing the terms of his release. Uh, paedophile child abuse images while out on licence. Uh, anyway, he's got another bid in uh, to um, be let out on parole, and he's apparently very buoyant. He thinks uh, he's got a very good chance. Uh, so he's working on his pres presentation, and he hopes to be out of jail very, very soon. Isn't that special? Let's talk to uh, former Met Police Detective Chief Inspector Mike Neville. Hi, Mike. Yes, uh, good afternoon from Stafford. This uh, uh, some Stafford. Yes, of course, we have to get your location sorted out yeah. first. Always somewhere different. Uh, I mean, why do we mess around with this? You know, we've got. Uh, you know, recently we had Colin Pitchfork, the double murder and rapist of school of two schoolgirls, who came out on license after a long time, thirty-five years or something, was immediately found hanging around a girls' school and returned to prison. We had Gary Glitter you know, paedophile, lifelong uh, abuser of children, let out on licence uh, eight years into a 16-year sentence. About a month later, he's caught on the dark web, calling up images of children. Not forgetting, of course, John Warboys at the parole board, the taxi rapist that the parole board was very keen to release. Luckily, the government stood, stepped in there and prevented his release. Now we've got John Venables. Why do we mess around giving these people... Uh, parole. Why don't we just leave them in jail? I mean, uh, John Venables is a paedophile. You know this as a copper, Mike. You can't rehabilitate paedophiles, can you? Uh, yeah, I'm absolutely with you on that, Kevin. And we've just had a, we've got it like everything in this country. We've got some sort of liberal uh, establishment who run these things, who, who probably think these characters are some kind of victims of society. And at some point, we've got to say that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the one and what we've seen with uh, the venables in particular he's been released uh, twice uh, and twice he's been recalled because of being a, having paedophile images so he's obviously a very flawed individual who is of great risk to uh, children anywhere and it's got to be the case that he will be kept in prison and stay there because he's a constant risk uh, to, to children everywhere, and it just cannot carry on like this. I think the government have now realised that the, the public get those votes in the fact that they um, they don't want these people released and they're, they're trying to do something about it. But you have always got this rub, I suppose, that you have a liberal uh, elite who run the criminal justice system and many other systems as well, and, and they will want to have parole and they don't believe in prison, whereas the vast majority of the public will want this character locked up and and staying locked up for a long, long time, if forever. And do you remember with the John Warboy's case uh, where it transpired, it emerged when we said, why do you want to let this guy out? He raped about 13 women in the back of his taxi, uh, including attempting to uh, attack... Uh, the former Prime Minister's wife, Carrie Johnson. She was one of his victims. She got away, thank God. But uh, a t horrendous track record of sex crimes. And, uh, you know, the question is, is well, why, why, why do you want to let this guy out? The thing is, it's their job, isn't it? They're the parole board. And when we said, why, what are your reasons for wanting to let John Moore boys out, they turned round to us. Do you remember? They said, actually, we don't have to tell you. I don't have to well, tell you. Well, they do now, but it's outrageous. Well, it's the, it's the attitude, you see. It's like the, the person... The thing is, the person who lets them out never has to deal with the consequence because they'll live in a nice home in Surrey uh, and he'll be released and gone off he'll go to some council estate in Bolton or Stoke or wherever where he's then a danger to sort of working-class people, but they're the plebs, so they, they don't... The elite really don't care, it never impacts on them. It's like when judges release people on bail, you've done the most horrendous things. It's because they don't consider, they, they're not a risk. They said, well, they have to live next door to you. You want to release them? Yeah. They live next door to you. Then they would seriously think about that. But they never do. They live in a, a bubble. They live in a different world altogether. I mean, now we've got the, uh, the actual opportunity for victims to come forward. After the war, boys, we saw victims coming forward and saying the impact on them and that has to be taken into consideration and that is very right 
but it is just an ongoing problem. And the thing is as well, is how much money does all this cost? How much money are these people to sit and make these decisions, which most people will consider stupid, you know, releasing these people, but they obviously think they're much more clever than me or you or any of the members of the public who want to see these people locked up. And, and it needs to change. But we've had 13 years of a Conservative government. And as you've just said before, the break, you know, these people keep being switched around and chopped around into different positions. And, and it becomes hopeless, doesn't it, that it, they just... It really does. And we should listen to uh, Jamie's, poor little Jamie's mum, Denise Fergus, and uh, his dad, Ralph, who have both written to the government opposing his release. And let's hope the government listen.